All right. It is Monday, and Coach Michelle is the first to join. And then, uh, and then they come in too fast, and I can't read them. Finding De Niro, get out of here. Sweary Fairy has joined, and this is Cody. You're looking at Cody. Okay. Hi, Claire does copy. Claire does copy. We just met yesterday. Good morning. Hold on, so I can. Letty. Hi, Letty. Max Ryan is in the house. Max Ryan, coach. Laura Bean, DP. Are you new? Are you new? Hold on. Whoop, 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 whoops. Hold on. Check and check and they check that check. Quintessential English Rose. Live from. Oh, I don't have my. I don't have my glasses. I'm so unprepared today, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Two lips, butterfly eyes. Cassiel, how evening? Yeah, it's morning here, Karen. Where are you, Karen? That it's evening. Uh, okay, well, so thank you all for all your energy and your punctuality. You know, it's funny because I, yes, Bob, <laughs> Nori. Yes, Bob Doyle of The Secret. <sighs> okay, so uh, thank you for inviting followers. I hope that doesn't backfire today because I got to tell you, well, okay, let me just, um, let me just, uh, I don't know. So it's, it's, uh, this is the LOA scope, the LOA scope, law of attraction scope. I do it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time right here on Periscope. And it's funny because I sit here, I, I sit here, uh, before I go on and I'm looking at the clock and I'm waiting for 10, you know, not like I can't do it at 9.58 or 9.59. It has to be 10 as if you guys are all sitting around with alarm set. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, bing, bing, bing. What is it? Oh, Bob's on. It's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I have my alarm set. I, you know, somehow I don't think that happens. Um, so this morning, you know, every time I do one of these, I generally either have, you know, have the idea for it the night before, or the day before, or whatever. I'm really clear. Or the morning I wake up like today, it comes to me. It's just right there. And I got to tell you that it didn't, it didn't come today. Like I really am not clear. On, on my topic today. And I'm sitting here writing things down. I said, well, what do I do it? I just come up with something or do I throw it out to you guys? Um, you know, what would you like to talk about? So, so I guess I'm, I, I, do you really come on? You, you kind of really said along. Yeah, well, I can improv. No problem. It's just about, uh, value. Um, but so, so let me just talk about a couple of things yesterday, by the way, I had a, um, an interesting little breakthrough. And one of the things I was toying around with talking to you about today was what action can you take today that is outside of your comfort zone that perhaps you've been delaying, but you know it will take you one step closer to your vision, to the realization of your vision. What is that action step that's been hanging around in your mind? You know, I need to do this because I know it can only help me. What is that action step? And, and can you do it today? Can I challenge you to just do it and not procrastinate, taking a laxative? You know, finding De Niro, I'm glad you're here. Um, boy, Deanna, it's nice. I'm glad you're new. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being here. And I really have got to get my glasses. You know what? Come with me. It's portable. I'm going to go get them because I can't read your comments without it. So... Just come with me, and then we'll go right back to where it's nice and bright. Oh, boy, I don't have the ones that you guys said you liked when we did a vote the other day. So this is pair number two that somebody left at our house after a party. So they're probably women's glasses, but they're going to help me. All right, here we go. So what action can you take today that you have been delay. And you can put it up here in the comments if you want, just, just as a sort of a public declaration. We don't even have to know what you're talking about. We don't have to have any context, you know. Um, do, why are you oh my godding? Are you laughing at my glasses? Are you trying to give me some kind of a complex love on fire? I'm doing the best I can here. I just want to be able to see your, see your comments. All right. Anyway, I don't know whose these are, but they work as readers for me today. So, I mean, come on, you know there's something. You know there's that one thing Created a positive vibe. Created a positive vibe game is a great scope. I do it a lot and helps a lot of people. Okay, glasses are fabulous. Thank you. Set a date for my first podcast or blab. That's awesome, Claire. You know, there. Walk out. Maybe I should walk out. Walk out. What do you mean? What do you mean walk out? I don't know what you mean. Hiding my beautiful eyes. Ding, you can see them right through the glass. This is glass. 
Uh, I'd rather uh, obstruct my, my eyes a little bit and be able to read your comments. 39 people in the room when I don't know what I'm talking about. Helping others by starting my business that will make, every, make a difference in everyone's lives. Okay, Just Bean or JST Bean or let me just find out how I should... Um, Bean. All right, Bean. So, you're going to do that today? Reached out to help a stranger. Is that something? Oh, Al, I'm so glad you're here. Starting a better periscope practice. These are all good things. Now, look, I don't want you just to throw these things out there and, and dismiss them. I want you to take action on them today. Getting up the nerve to talk with my fiance. Ooh, that sounds, uh, that sounds nervy. I think, you know, the thing, when we, when we delay things like this, obviously it's because we're up against some sort of a comfort zone and we rat, our ego is telling us, no, no, you don't want to do that. You know, you, you just need to stay right here. You can do it tomorrow or you can do it tomorrow. Now this isn't really, a, this isn't, the topic here isn't procrastination. It's just how it, procrastination is what we do when we're confronted with this type of thing. She wants to start a charity. Wow. Okay. So do it. So, so what I was going to say was, you know, this thing that you've been wanting to do, just think about how great it's going to feel when you actually do it, when it's done. I know all the, the fear and the anticipation and the whatever it is, um, you know, is overwhelming and your ego is winning the argument about why you shouldn't do it. It's just, you know, clearly because you haven't done it yet. But if you do it, the, it's not just about getting the action item done. It's what happens to you energetically because you did it. People stick to me like glue when I help them with the law of attraction. Awesome. Procrastination, automatic defense mechanism. Procrastination is my friend. Yes, procrastination is not in and of itself a bad thing. Sometimes it's very appropriate to wait until the timing is right. But then there are other times when you know. You know that it's not, it has nothing to do with waiting till the right time or anything like that. You know you should be doing it and you're not doing it. There's a, there's a distinct difference. I think everybody understands that. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't want people to beat themselves up because they procrastinate. It's sometimes it's, it's completely appropriate, but, but when you know that it's not, that's what I'm talking about. So for example, I have been talking since Periscope started about, I, you know, I even broadcast, I put it in my description that I, you know, I, in addition to talking about the law of attraction, I'll do the, I'll play the ukulele, right? Well, I've never really done it. Um, you know, I've, I've played the uke with Lynn on our Fun with Bob and Lynn show, but I never did do a scope of just me playing the ukulele, you know, in the fun way that I wanted to. And every, and it was kind of torturing me. It was like, God, when am I going to do that? And it was just so, thank you, Al. So, you know, it was, it was really getting heavy. So I made a commitment on Friday that over the weekend I was going to do a ukulele scope. I did. That's the, that's where I'm getting to. Yesterday I did. Um, first I did like an hour and a half blab about voiceover training and, 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 you know, sharing my process of voiceover. So I spent a good amount of time there. And then it was like, okay, well, I've only got a few hours to do this. Thank you. Thank you. It was an awesome scope. I appreciate that. I only have a few more hours to do this because I knew I was going out last night to see the B-52s and the psychedelic furs at the Hollywood Bowl. Which I'll talk about them on a minute if you care. Um, no, but it's okay. The, the replay is there. All my replays are there. I save them to my uh, BobDoyleShow.com website, and they're on Facebook. They're everywhere. So they're never, never gone. Um, but the, the point is, is I did it, and I was, I was nervous. I was scared. I was, yeah, Rock Lobster, that was the last thing they did. Um, that was their encore with a full orchestra. It was really cool. Um, but I pushed that, you know, start broadcast button and I was just beside myself with nerves. But I knew, number one, it was going to be good for me. I'm, I'm, I'm really, Love Shack, yes, that was what they did right before. That was their first encore and then Rock Lobster and then we all went home happy. Um, but I knew that, not just about being an in integrity, you know, that I said I was going to do this scope. And, and I want this, I, I'm cycling this back around to you and what you know you should do for your energy, you know. 
So one thing, I was out of integrity because I kept saying I'm going to do these scopes and I wasn't doing them. Second of all, this is a passion of mine, playing the ukulele and sharing the joy of the ukulele and, and just what it does for me personally to actually play and sing and things I, I just don't normally do. I knew it was going to be good for me energetically as well because I felt that part of me just kind of fading off. It was like, really, am I going to go back to just being a closet ukulele player and not playing for anybody and not sharing that with people? Is that what's going to happen? Because that's what I saw happening. And so I'm asking you to look at yourself and go, what, what are you hiding from the rest of the world? What are you holding back on putting out there? You know, this all goes around to the action that you take. I always feel awesome to work from your passion heart center. We should do things that make us feel great. Absolutely. But my ego was telling me, well, you know, you're, you're not practiced enough. You're not ready. You're going to screw up. It's not going to sound good. Your voice is out, blah, blah, blah. I mean, all that stuff, right? All the reasons. The similar reasons that you may have for not taking that action step that you know you need to take, that is there for you to take, that is part of your purpose and passion and why you're here. And those are the ones that your ego screams the loudest about, you know, because it doesn't want you to play a big game. It wants you to stay right here. Oh, that it is a bugger. LLL Coaching. One moment, please. I'm checking you out. Oh, low battery. Jeez. Sarah Naylor. You know, Sarah, that name is familiar to me. Have we crossed paths before? Uh, life and career coach, helping you achieve your goals, realize your dreams, and fulfill your potential. Follow. All right. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I hit the go button, and I'm sitting there, and now I think the first words out of my mouth were, okay, now I'm committed, <laughs> you know, because once you hit start broadcast, you're, I mean, you know, you got to do something, and so that's what I did, and I played five songs, and Amazingly, it didn't take me that long to feel like in my groove, and I didn't, and I suddenly didn't care that I messed up. Um, oh, you're you're more than welcome. See the benefits of showing up to my scope and participating. I get to call you out and get people to follow you and all of that stuff. It's a win-win-win to be on an LOA scope, even if I don't really talk about too much. Um, but the point is, is I felt myself really just in that space that I haven't felt myself in in a long time which is very unique to playing the ukulele when people I know, when I know that people are watching. It's it's so different than just playing. I mean, I get joy out of just I don't have one here right here. But I get joy out of just playing it, you know, just around the house, but it's a completely different thing when I know I'm sharing it. And just like you and your ideas, it's one thing to have these great ideas and to know that you're capable of something, you know, all this potential. That's good. You can feel good about that. But when you put it out there, Yes, I did a uke scope, but you can find it. It's out there. It'd be, it's still going to be in my replays because um, I did it yesterday afternoon. So once this is over, you can go to my profile, hit replay, and you can see the uke scope. It's about 27 minutes of pure uke-ness. Um, but the point is, is so, so it really didn't take long for my ego to go away and just let me have fun with it. It was the starting. It was the getting the action going. That was the hard part. Once I started, I was there. You know what I mean? So it's really just about moving past that. that and, and it was extreme discomfort. I'm telling you, when I'm pushing that button, start broadcast, I am inside. I'm freaking out because I'm going, I could talk about the law of attraction all day. I could do voiceovers all day. No problem. No, no nerves, you know, whatever. How do you get out of S mental rut, A mental rut maybe? I don't know. Stuck. Okay. Anyway, um, but once I got the flow going, the energetic flow, and then when I'm, then, then that momentum took on. How do you, how do you, the people to move on their own? Okay, I, th I think we're missing some words. I need some words. So I'm missing. Um, mental rut. Okay, you know what? Ask because I, I had didn't see. I, I lost all content. Let me finish my thought, and then I will actually look at your comments and at, and answer your questions. But what I guess what I'm what I'm what I'm my point is is that as hard as it is to take that action that you know you should take for whatever reason, it's because your ego is wanting you to stay stuck. It's wanting you to just keep doing the same thing because it's comfortable that way. It doesn't want you to be uncomfortable. But the point is is that you actually do feel uncomfortable anyway when you know you're not doing it. See, you can't win when you're dealing with the ego. I, every time I thought about the, doing a uke scope, I felt uncomfortable. Not about doing it, but because I wasn't doing it. 
You know what I mean? So you've got this thing in your mind. Start the business. Start the charity. Write the book. Do whatever. Do more periscoping. Start a blab. You've got this thing in your mind. And every day you don't do it when you know you should. Now it becomes that's another burden. So now you're burdened because you're, you don't want to or, or you're not doing it. Sorry, let me say that again. You're burdened because you're nervous about doing it. You've got that ego thing happening. And you're burdened because you know you're not doing it and you should. So the only right thing to do is to do it because you know then you get to move on to the next step you get to get into that energetic flow and into that momentum i'm inside your head <laughs> i wish i could come up with something hilariously funny to say to that but right now the hilarity button is not pressed yeah so just do it it's so easy to say isn't it just do it just go do it start the blab push start broadcast I quit my 70 hour a week job to do this. The fear is there, but I'm doing it. That is awesome. I have been there. I've done the whole quit the job thing, you know, with no safety net. Nervous about doing it. Spot on. I love encouraging others to take that step. The universe will always support. You know, especially with, if, if your thing is like the blab and the periscope and you just want to be more consistent. It's, there's no, it's, as, except for the, the stray troll, which by the way, I haven't had a troll in my room in weeks and weeks and weeks. I just don't attract them, you know. And I think, because it doesn't, I, number one, it doesn't bother me if they're there. I just block them. So it's not, that's not an issue. But whatever it is that, that is stopping you from starting your blab or your periscope or whatever it is, you know, the best thing I can tell you to do is just hit go. Because everyone's so supportive. If you say it's your first blab, man, I'm telling you, you will get hearts, you will get support, you'll get encouragement. It's a wonderful thing. And you don't have to be clear and you don't have to be concise and you don't have to be, you don't have to be anything. Just turn it on. A troll, a troll is somebody who comes in and just says nasty things, you know, um, just they're, they're mean or they insult other people or they just are inappropriate. That's what a troll is. And, um, you know, you'll find them, you know, there, there are certain types of scopes that seem to attract them. Um, I'm sorry, I missed your comments there. Uh, you know, if you're a lot of times if you're a beautiful young lady and you're just on and you're doing this, then the, the guys come in and they just say nasty things. And that's a troll. So I don't get that. It'd be funny if I had like a bunch of female trolls in here saying nasty things, but they, women just don't do that. Isn't that nice? Guys are such idiots. No. All right. How do you get the people to go on with the law of attraction? I feel surrounded, overwhelming. You, you, can't, you can't make people get on board with the law of attraction. It just doesn't happen. It's it's like it's for some people it's it's like a religion. I mean, it's not a religion, but it's that kind of mindset, that kind of belief. They either believe it, they have space for it, or they don't. And trying to convince them of it is like trying to get somebody to come to your church and check it out. You know, it's just an act natural resistance. They have to be ready. They have to be open. And and the best thing that I can tell anybody around that is just live it. Just be an example. And then when, if, if they're inspired by how things are going in your life, they'll ask you questions, then you can tell them because now they've opened the door and they've, they want to know. And then if they still reject it, well, okay, it's not time and it's not your job. It's not your job. When I started this work, you know, my commitment, my decision at that time was I'm not going to try to convince anybody about the law of attraction. I will teach it. I will share my knowledge on it. I'll do the best of my ability to communicate it in a way that people can understand it. Before he, I now open loop. Before I do, I would just like to say, finding De Niro is going to leave. I don't know what he was. Um, but yeah, it's very exhausting to try to convince somebody about the law of attraction or any kind of belief that you have that you want them. Because you know, you, you, in your mind, it's like, oh, your life would be so much better if you would just... Thanks, Lisa. Long time for long. Oh, Lisa Long, thank you for bringing Catman Poker here. Um, Where did I first hear about the LOA? All right, hold on. Let me finish this. Let me finish my my thought. Anyway, it's just it's just energetically draining to try and convince somebody. So don't uh, don't do it. Don't even worry about it. You live your life. You create your experience of reality. Don't let them drain you. If if you're being drained by somebody's lack of belief on the law of attraction, that's something for you to look at. Okay. That's, that is uh, an area of resistance where you could do some work. If you're, getting, if you're getting energetically affected by somebody else's belief system or lack thereof. So you just be you. You live your life with passion. You use the law of attraction to the best of your ability and show the world what's possible. 
and let those who are ready to follow, follow. But don't waste your time. I know it can be hard if, if you're like in a family environment or, you know, you've got these people around you and they're, you know, not on board. But the best thing to do is just to silently go through your life and, you know, and be a, a living example. It's just like LLL coaching is saying, people have to want to change. And you telling them how their life is going to be better, they just resist it. I mean, think about you. How many times has somebody come up to you and told you what you should do? Ugh, it's the worst I mean, I, I, there, I have, it doesn't matter if it's even good for me. I just don't like being told what I should do. If anybody uses the word should to me, I'm immediately going to say no in my mind. Now that, you know, that could be my problem and I could do some work on that. But it is a natural reaction for a lot of people. You do you. Those that matter don't mind and those that mind don't matter. See what you did there? Okay. Uh, where did I first hear about the law of attraction? You know, I think the first time I heard about it was, it didn't really register, it didn't really land, um, but it was the book, um, Excuse Me, Your Life is Waiting, Lynn Grabhorn. I read that book so long ago, and, and then it just kind of went right out of my head. And then it was years later, and then I started learning about, um, um, uh, sorry, I got distracted by the comments again. Um, and then I learned about wealth consciousness and quantum physics, and then it all came back around to like Abraham and the law of attraction terminology came back up into, into my space. So first I think Lynn Grabhorn, but then really back in 2002 when I was reading A Happy Pocket Full of Money, uh, which is kind of the, the big uh, textbook in my Wealth Beyond Reason program, which talked about the quantum physics of thought and things like those. That's what really turned on my lights. The term law of attraction, I don't even think was used in that. It was all about wealth consciousness. So it was after that, that law of attraction came up. Um, and then I really dug into the science of that. And I, and I still, to this day, explain it a little bit differently than most law of attraction teachers. But, but hey, I like it that way because it makes more sense. It's logical and most skeptical people can get a handle, um, can, can understand it a little bit more when you use some science rather than just saying, Hey, what you focus on, you get more of. Why? Oh, you, you, you just do. Yeah. Um, okay. Your sparkly distractions. Yes, you are sparkly distractions. I became ready by listening, researching, and not trying hard. Good. Resonates with me how you say it. Thank you, Sweary Fairy. Yeah, you know, I'm just, I, I, you know, I find my tribe, the people who who resonate with the way that I teach the law of attraction, and those and and those people tend to like the programs and the various things I do. And if I'm not a fit, they go find somebody who does. I mean, there's plenty of people teaching it in various ways, um, you know, so that you can get it. I don't know why I went down that track. Okay, let's see. Did somebody ask me a question that I didn't address yet? Um, first, whatever. All right, so and I guess I'm going to just, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I think it was, it was kind of a late night with the whole B-52s thing, and then I came home and I couldn't sleep, and so I didn't get a lot of sleep either. Do you speak or teach in L.A. area? <clears throat> I would like to. Um, I am in L.A. That's where I live. I live in Marina del Rey. Um, and I would actually like to do more speaking. I, I, I haven't done speaking in quite a while. Mostly focused on Internet stuff and, you know, just haven't really put myself out there. This, the whole speaking world is so weird now. I mean, because um, you want to hear more of the quantum physics part. Well, I've got a boatload of quantum physics, Courtney, for you. And I keep meaning to, I, I, I got to create an easy link to, I have a webinar that I did with a quantum physicist several years ago. And um, uh, let me address that first. Um, that, that really digs into it. And then, then we have a, a, a that, and that's a free webinar. And then we have a paid version, which is in three parts and really digs deep into it. But I got plenty of science. I just don't have a quick link to give you. I'm going to set that up today. The quick link to free science. And then I can share that with you next time and you can get, um, get access to it quickly. Um, so yeah, no, I haven't, uh, the, the whole thing about speaking these days is like in our industry, it's like, you know, that no one wants to pay you for your time. They want you to get up there and then sell something at the back of the room, you know, and that's how you earn your money for the value that you give in the speech. And, you know, I just, that's just, I, number one, my, my programs are all digital. It's hard to sell a digital program at the back of the room. And it's also that, you know, if you know that the whole point of your talk is leading up to asking for a sale, I don't have any problem with selling things. I know that my stuff has value. I should be charging money for it. I, I, that, I have no problem with that. And it's not, so it's not about, 
It's just that the, the, the audience expectation is, oh, here it comes, right? And I don't want, I don't want that. Anyway, that's my stuff. But um, honestly, I prefer just to, to be paid to speak for my time and give the value there. And then if people want to dig, they can ask me. Or I can tell them, but it's not like a, now I've only got 10 left to go to the back of the room right now because uh, this is the only chance you'll get. Not my style. And so because that's kind of how the speaking industry uh, has gone, I haven't done that much speaking. So uh, I do webinars. Yes, there, I have a lot of stuff up on YouTube. If you go to the Wealth Beyond Reason channel on YouTube, you'll find all sorts of Q&A webinars, all, 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 all sorts of stuff. You can go to, uh, if you go, actually, if you go to boundlessliving.com, and then if you click the Our Programs button, it's actually a link to a bunch of free stuff, like my YouTube channel and different things. Um, yeah, the quantum physics can make people a little bit nervous. And I always say, you don't have to be a quantum physicist to, you know, to use the law of attraction. It's just sometimes it helps to fill in some of those blanks. Just enough science to people go, okay, I can see that, not to boggle their mind. Because, I mean, that's, that, that serves no purpose anyway, because then they just close off. And the guy who I did the interview with does a really good job of just easing you through it. Um, yeah, and BoundlessLivingCoaching.com. Um, wow, there's, there's, there's a lot of resources. Uh, really, if you go to BoundlessLiving.com, that will point you to every to all the different various resources of content, free and otherwise, that, um, that we provide. Okay, so... Did I answer? Oh, the furs, psychedelic furs. Yeah, so they opened at the Hollywood Bowl, and they had the whole orchestra behind them. And I gotta say, it, they weren't nearly as strong as the B fifty two. Something about the the energy or whatever. Um, and it, and I we had these seats, so I could see a good bit of the crowd. And it was really interesting how still the crowd was. There wasn't like a lot of dancing and stuff. There were a few people rocking back and forth when the psychedelic furs were playing. And, and don't get me wrong, I like their music. It's just that the show, for whatever reason, didn't seem to connect with the audience. But man, when the B-52s came out, it was cray, cray. In a wonderful way. It was so fun. It was, And I really wasn't even a... Like, I knew the same few songs that everybody else knows the B-52s sang. Um, and it was really cool to hear those things. But just the performance and just that they are... And I'm thinking, this was 30 years ago. 30 years ago and these and these women still sing awesome they still hit those weird tight harmonies and the guys just still it's just it was just great it was just great fun all right that was a little bit of an aside um all right oh really same same experience with the psychedelic first when you think oh so they were here last month hey lisa it's good to see you um all right so i feel like this was the most disjointed scope i have ever done kind of all over the place and I almost didn't do it. I seriously almost said, you know what, I'm just not going to do one. But I think if there's, if, if, if any of you watching had the thought, you know what, there is this action item that I would feel so much better if I just took it, no matter how much my ego is telling me not to do it. If I take that action item today, things will be better. That'll make the scope worth it. Because I, you know, I have, <laughs> you should see my whiteboard of all the to-dos. I've made myself too busy, and that is my own issue. Um, I've made myself too busy. I've put way too much on my plate. I can't possibly, you know, this, listen to my own conversation. I can't possibly handle it. That's not, a, that's not an empowering thing to say. So use me as an example of what not to say. But, hey, I'm just a human being, and I'm being human. Oh, did you see what I did? <laughs> all right, anyway. So do that thing. Do that thing today, no matter how hard it is to get it done. Because, wow, the gift you will be giving yourself when you do it. I need a bigger plate. Actually, I just need more utensils, which means more people. I need more people. But I'm getting my people. My coaching organization is just this close to being launched. We're, and this is very exciting for me because I've been able to, to more or less duplicate myself through these amazing coaches that we've been training. And now the delay has been, well, now we want to start a, a, you know, an actual coaching organization around it. And that's like a whole business structure with all sorts of stuff that I hadn't anticipated. And that's, that was more than I, than I bargained for with all the other stuff I've got going. So that's kind of on me. But man, oh man, when that gets launched, oh, it's going to be awesome. So awesome. I'm very, very excited about it. Okay, so you all, thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for following. Uh, I do these every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Oh, 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 very important. 
So look, I don't know how many of you are on blab.im yet. Probably a good number of you are. Um, I, I highly recommend going over there and checking out Blab because if you love Periscope, you're going to love Blab too. A lot of the same content creators are out there, and it's a much more interactive environment because you can bring people in and talk with them face-to-face. -face. And one of the things I'm going to be doing with these LOA broadcasts is going over to Blab so that I can bring in one of my coaches uh, each time and we talk about a particular subject. Um, so we're both on the screen, and then we can bring you in for questions. And that's supposed to start this week. That's another one of the things on my plate is to coordinate all that with these coaches who have all volunteered and said, I want to talk about this, and now it's just up to me. Yeah, there is too much social media. They keep coming up with this cool stuff that I can't resist playing with. I think you know what I'm talking about. You are more than welcome. Thank you all for being here. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for continuing to come and to, uh, and to doing whatever it is you're doing out in the world. And what I would love is to... I, you may not ever do this, but I would love it if you would do that thing, do that thing that you're, that you know you should be doing and then direct message me on Twitter or whatever and tell me what you did. You know, just a little bit of mini accountability or come into our Boundless Living Coaching uh, Facebook page and share it there and get involved with some of our coaches and uh, be a part of our community. So I'm going to... I'm going to get back to work here. I've got a lot of voiceover stuff. And my phone is about to die, apparently. So I appreciate the, the kind words and that somehow in all of this rambling, I was able to inspire at least a little bit. But I'm telling you, if you do that thing today, you're going to feel so freaking awesome. All right. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go do that thing. <laughs>